Hi guys, so we're joined today by Paul Brown. It's one of my friends. He's just turned pro in professional boxing. Um, thanks for letting me train with you today. Yeah, so we just had a training session which lasted about, how long was it? An hour and a half? Hour? An hour, hour and a half, yeah. It's intense, so uh, I'm a bit sweaty as you can see. But yeah, so Paul, I wanted to ask you some questions about your journey into becoming pro and uh, I guess also what drove you into this career path. Talk us through your life growing up. So what sort of background you had, your family life, that sort of thing. I had a good family, to be honest. Um, tried to try my hardest at school. I was diagnosed with ADHD at school, so I was always sectioned out from everybody else. Always had a few problems. Yeah. Uh, got a little bit bullied um, until my, my dad gave me a slap one day and told me to stick up for myself. And since then, it just uh, I like fighting. And um, basically, basically, I was fighting on the streets, and, uh, and that's what got me into boxing. So did you use boxing as a way to sort of channel that anger and frustration or? I did, yeah. yeah. It was uh, people that used to wind me up through the day or because I had quite a short temper, they used to bring it to the boxing gym. That's quite healthy actually, isn't it? Yeah. It rather is, than yeah. take it out on that person, get yourself into trouble, get yourself in the ring rather, and take it out in the bag. Bring it to the, yeah. yeah, exactly. Bring it to the boxing gym, do it in a controlled environment, either yeah. in a ring or on, on a boxing bag. Why, why boxing though? Why not something else? Like some people use, I don't know, fishing or whatever to, down, as downtime, what is it about boxing in particular that really attracts you to the sport? <laughs> uh, that's going to sound bad, but punching. It always used to give me a buzz, and now, from nine years on, I, I still get a buzz of doing it. I, I, I guess there's something about hitting that bag and that sort of exertion of energy can really get out of that frustration. It really can, yeah. 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 I, I think about what's happened through the day or or what's happened in the last couple of days or the weeks and I just think about that one thing and I let it all out on a bag and after I finish on a bag or when I'm sparring I, I come away feeling fantastic. Yeah. Do you ever picture people's faces in the bag? <laughs> I have done it in the past, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How old were you when you first got into boxing? Uh, I was 18, 18 when I first started boxing, yeah. There was a few lads at work actually said about doing it and uh, I said yeah okay I'll give it a try and went on from there. Yeah, great. Who inspires you in the sport currently? Currently and previously, is that any sort of? Uh, it used to be Cole Frotch. Uh, Cole Frotch used to uh, inspire me. He's, uh, I think he's a fantastic fighter. Just his style, his power, he's just everything about him. Now, I'd, who can I say? I'd, I'd say probably Joshua. Joshua's just on a different level. I, yeah. I follow him on social media and I watch his training and what he does and he's just, yeah. he's just, he's fantastic. Yeah, actually I do follow his Instagram and yeah, it's quite intense it, training. It really yeah. is, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's, uh, we're trying to, like in our training, we're trying to copy some of that. And some of the things that we do is just, it's, it's really hard, but yeah. it's, it's, you need it. Absolutely. You really do need yeah. it. How do you stay motivated? So at the moment, obviously you work full time, you've got, you've got kids. How do you stay motivated after a full day of work, looking after the kids and coming into the gym with limited energy and then <coughs> trying to do a full session? Well, I work 13 hours a day, obviously being a postman. I see my children as well. But the thing is, is, I've worked nine years in this boxing. I've had the amateurs, I've had 30 amateurs, one in Kent, Sussex and Southern Counties. Got some national quarterfinals. Went to unlicensed, had uh, 15 114 fights, um, which was, it's like a, a stepping stone onto the pros. And I've worked so hard for this. And I've had people in the past saying, you'll never turn pro, you're not good enough. And you know what, it might sound crazy, but I've, I've had those little, those things going on in my head and it makes me want to train harder. It makes me want to push myself to prove those people wrong. It's a good know. feeling, isn't it? It is, it's a fantastic yeah. thing, you know. Yeah. I've had two pros, one and both. You know, we're starting to step it up now. We're training, the sponsors, the people that we've got lined up for sparring. Yeah. We've been speaking to a, fr a, a lad called Frank Buglioni, who used to be British and Commonwealth Light Heavyweight Champion, where I want to get to that level. And that's because I'm putting in the hard work and starting to impress. So we're starting to get opportunities like that. That's amazing. So when, when you know, that's what keeps me motivated. After a 13 hour day shift, you know, that's what makes me want to train. Because you can see the end goal and it isn't, I suppose it's not that far away anymore. Um, it's not that unachievable. It's not as if you're starting out from scratch. No. You've been doing it for nine years. You've been yeah. in the ring so many times. You've been hit so many times. That fear isn't there anymore, I suppose, is it? It's not, no. It's, um, with, with, with our training, we, we, we spar we spar lighter fellas and we also spar heavier blokes. And, you know, these, these heavier blokes do hit me hard. But I've got a fantastic chin on me. I've never been knocked out. And I know that the harder the sparring, when I get into the ring and actually fight, I'm going to be like, what's that? Yeah. You know, you're tickling me. Come yeah, on, yeah. hit me harder. 
Yeah, it's a good way to build yourself up for it, I suppose, isn't it? That's it, yeah. yeah. You know, you, you train really, really hard, put yourself through so much, and then when it comes to the actual fight, it's easy. Yeah. It actually is quite easy. It's like another training session, isn't it? It is, basically, yeah. yeah. It's a little sparring session. Yeah. Have you ever had a big break moment where you just thought, actually, I can do this, this is going to happen now, things started moving very quickly, sponsors came on board, people started to back you. Did you have that moment? After my, my last unlicensed fight last year in August, I boxed a fella that was ranked first or second in England in the unlicensed, and I got a draw against him, but we felt we won, and I impressed a lot of people. And then we signed our pro contract, and it's, it's about building a profile up. In fact, I've built myself up a profile where, I've, like I said, I've won titles, I put a lot of things on social media, but, but people are talking about me, and we've managed to get seven or eight sponsors that have pumped a load of money into us to help us out. It has really, really helped us, and we are finally getting that big break. Yes, we're in the gym seven days a week. Yes, we're, we're training, like for instance, on a Sunday, I'm training twice, three times a day. But I enjoy it. Yeah. And I'm thinking about the end goal, which is the Southern Area title, which I, I set myself a goal to become a pro. I've done that. I've now set myself another goal to, to get to a Southern Area title. And I know with the determination and the training and the people I have around me, good people, I know I can get there. What are your passions? What are my passions? Yeah, what are you passionate about? Boxing. Boxing. Just just boxing. I want to do something with my life. I want people to go, yeah, Paul Brown, he, he was a fantastic pro. And eventually, you know, once once my pro career is finished, I'd like to I'd like to open up a gym maybe or come down to this gym and be a trainer down here and, and see little kids of the ages of nine, ten, eleven and just just teaching them and, uh, and showing them everything that I've I've learned throughout the years and, and seeing them build up. Exactly. Inspire the next yeah. generation That's of boxers. It, yeah. Yeah, seeing them build up and go through the amateurs and the unlicensed and then get into the pros. Yeah. Uh, maybe even my, my, my own son. Yeah. If, if he chooses to go down a path of boxing, teach him everything that I know. Yeah. So how many kids you got? I've got two. I've got a little boy and a little girl. And how old are they? Uh, my little girl's just come up to four and my little boy's just turned two. Yeah. Would you be okay with your little girl getting into the ring? No, no, she's daddy's little princess. No, my boy, my boy is absolutely fine. If, yeah. if, if that's the path he chooses, then, then I'll, I'll support him 100%. You know, no, no mother or father wants to see their child get punched in the head or anything like no, that. Of course, no, of course they don't. But he's got his own life. If he chooses to do that, yeah, that's, that's fine. true. To date, what is your greatest achievement? My greatest achievement? Um, turning pro. Definitely turning pro. How yeah. did that feel for you? There isn't any words to describe it because when I first started the amateurs, it was people would say to me when I first started, you'll never turn pro. You'll never do this, you'll never do that. And I've always proved people wrong. And the coach that I've got now, Mario and Michael, and the team I've got behind me have, and, I, and don't get me wrong, I've had, I've had down days. I've, I've had people trying to be negative around me and this, that, the other, but they've picked me up and I've, I've got to where I am now because of them. Yeah. You know, we've put the hard work in, we've put, and, uh, you know, and it's, it's because of them. So you yeah. use the, um, the team, the backers, also the people who are go going against you as motivation and support yeah. to push you. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, it's a, there's, there's a lot of um, negative people around, there's a lot of jealous people around. Uh, I'll be completely straight up, you know, and, it's, and, and I know the day that I get that title shot and I win and I'm the new champ, we're going, yeah, that's for all the haters out there. Brilliant. What advice would you give yourself when you were first starting out? If you can go back now and know what you know now and have the experience you have now, what would you say to yourself when you were first starting out? Listen. Listen. Listen to the coaches. Yeah. Because before I, I just... I you used arrogant to, before. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah to completely right. I was very arrogant. Yeah, I chose not to listen. I was young. Um, and boxing is a, is a dangerous sport. You get punched in the head. You know, it's, it's not easy. No. You know, and I thought I, I was young, I was stupid, and I thought I knew better, and you really don't. So if I was to go back, I'd just say, listen to other people around us first and uh, that's it really, yeah. So what does uh, downtime look like for you? How do you relax, unwind? If you have time for that, how do you do it? Um, meeting up with friends for coffee. Seeing my children, it chills me out, it's relaxing. You know, I know you like Nando's as well. I love Nando's, yeah. I live in Nando's, yeah I do. <laughs> cheeky Nando's. Yeah, cheeky Nando's. Um, but yeah, I don't really get a lot of time because I'm working 13 hours a day, plus I'm training sometimes twice a day every six, six, seven days a week, plus seeing my children. I don't have a lot of downtime, but the time I get to see all my children, that's, that's relaxing. If you have one, what is your biggest failure? And what did you learn from that? Just got into, into the wrong crowd when I was younger. 
Um, yes, I had my good friends, but also got into the wrong crowd and done some silly things, which I ended up getting arrested for, um, which I regret because it caused a little pain on my mum and my dad at the time, which my mum and dad ended up moving away. So if I could go back, I'd, I'd change that. But at the same time, you're probably using that as motivation to push yourself and actually make it even more, because then you can do good things with your family, I suppose. Yeah, true. But then I, I didn't, obviously I wouldn't look at it at the, at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there was things that I've done in the past, which I, I totally regret and yeah. wish, wish I hadn't done it. So any advice I'd give to anybody is just don't mix with the wrong crowds. Just stay with good people around you and, uh, you know, and don't get yourself into trouble. Yeah. What's a typical day look like for you? Well, a weekday or a weekend? Any day, just a, a week. Let's do let's do weekday. Weekdays, uh, I get up at half five in the morning for work. I have, have, have one of my meals that supply for the, by the Healthy Meal Prep Kitchen. Uh, that's which, one of your sponsors. That's yeah. one of my sponsors that cater for my meals and that's whilst I'm in training camp. I have one of them. I go to work for 13 hours, have another meal, and then once I'm finished, I'll get, go home, get changed, and go straight down to the gym. And I'm training for two and a bit hours in the gym. Every day? Every day, yeah. It's mad. What's the next five years look like for Paul Brown? Hopefully, uh, we've got our third professional fight coming up. We're gonna try and get four a year in. Now, we're starting to make a name for ourselves. We've actually had a couple of people call us out to fight for a challenge belt, which at the minute, we're not ready to step up to eight rounds. So that's building the profile up. So I'm hoping we'll try and get four in a year, keep winning, and hopefully next year, we're gonna go for the British Masters title, which is for the light heavyweight title, make a defense of that and then go for the southern area. Ideally, I'd like to get to the southern area, you know, achieve my goal that I've set out for, and then I'll sit down with my team and then hopefully maybe go for the British. But I don't want to get well ahead of myself. I want to take every fight as it comes. You know, every, every training camp we've got different sparring. Yeah. Um, we've got new sponsors that are coming through. Like I said, we're, st we're, we're starting to get a name for ourselves. People are starting to, you know, in September, I'm actually going to a school and doing a two day uh, teaching kids for two days, you know, about boxing. What's it like to be a pro boxer? A year and a half ago, before I was pro, I wouldn't be doing anything like that. No, no. You know, so it's also, funny how your life can just change really so can, quickly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's, that's because I've put the hard work in for that. You know, I, I've, it, it's not anybody else that's in the gym. It's, it's myself that's in the gym at half past eight on a Sunday morning, or it's myself that's going out for a run at half past five in the morning. You know, it's nobody else. It's me. No, but it's it's little things like this. Just give you something. It's back. quite interesting to think that you were once this um, terror away child, and now you're going back to a school to inspire kids <laughs> within that <laughs> educational environment. As you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I used to be like, I used yeah. to be terrible, yeah. So what's the end goal? What are you driving towards? We're driving towards getting a Southern Area title shot. That's my goal, a Southern Area title. Um, I'll look where I am after that, what age I am at that, at that time, uh, where I am in my life, whether I have a girlfriend. Uh, we can push on from the Southern Area title, get a TV appearance, box on TV, go for the British title, who knows? I don't feel 28, I feel 21. It's all that training though, keeps you young I suppose, doesn't it? It does, yeah, I, I'm eating healthily, I'm, I'm training seven days a week, I feel great. I really do, you know, I'm fit and I'm ready to fight. And I think you've got the right mentality for it as well. You're really focused, you're really driven, and you know what you want to achieve, and you've got that little timeline in your head of what you want to achieve by a certain point in your life. Boxing really boxing is a very, very difficult sport. Yeah. It's, it's a very, very difficult sport, and if you're not focused, you're going to get hurt. There's no question about it. It's, you, you get punched in the head, you get punched in the stomach, and it can cause some serious damage if you're not focused. You know, it's, it's not about going in there and throwing windmills and, yeah. and having a tear up. You've got to think about the person that's in front of you and pick yeah. your shots and you know, what they're about to do to you. Yeah, it's a lot of planning, I suppose. It really is, yeah. yeah. How did you become so disciplined? I don't know, really. It's just since I'm turning pro, there's not many people but around. But you would have had to be disciplined before you turned pro anyway you wouldn't have got this to the stage would you I, I i was disciplined i was disciplined yeah but i could still have a cheeky pizza yeah yeah, yeah. or i could because yeah, you know, this is not just about your training this is your whole lifestyle it's your whole lifestyle exactly you know it's the unlicensed game and everything it's like i said it's a stepping stone but you're actually a fully professional boxer now when, when sponsors have pumped money into you and there's newspapers doing articles on you social media and people buying tickets for 55 35 quid people expect to see you working hard and expect to see a good performance out of you so you don't want to let them down do i don't you? want to let them down no exactly right you know i've got a, i've got a world ranking i've got a british ranking it's amazing no, and, what, what is your ranking uh, i'm 69 in england and i'm 500 in the world and that's after two two that's professional amazing. fights wow 
So, so who knows where you'll be in a year's time or two years time? Exactly right. Who knows? If you know, hopefully I'll be I'll be ranked number one in, in yeah. England. I'm sure you will. How many hours do you sleep? <laughs> um, this is a question that always fascinates me about people who have achieved a certain level in their life because to be that disciplined, to be that focused, and to commit so much of your time to a certain goal, you have to, something has to give. Whether it's your sleep or it's something else, it's downtime. So how much? How many hours do you sleep? About about five hours. I'm normally good with about five hours. You're okay sleep. with that? I'm okay with Gosh. about five hours sleep. You know, I, I'll be uh, a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I am. To be fair, yeah. sometimes I am, but I'm so buzzing. Is that why you love coffee so much? <laughs> yeah, exactly right. I'm so buzzing after a training session, and I just I get out of my shower, and I just I can't actually I can't actually sleep for a while because my head's just my head's just, yeah. I'm still buzzing. I'm ticking over. And it's all that passion, though, isn't it? Ex exactly and the right. Adrenaline. Yeah. It's, it's different when I have a fight. Though, when I have a fight, a couple of days up to the fight, I can't sleep at all, and it's you know. I've had over 40, 50 fights. Thanks for answering my questions today. Um, we hope this video inspires other people who are looking to get into professional boxing on how they can actually do that. Uh, don't forget to follow Paul Brown on his social media. We'll uh, put the links up and stay tuned for more interviews. Take care, see you later.